Okay guys, in this third video, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you how to distress. This here, uh, I don't know if you can see this whole beautiful piece, it actually used to be a headboard and a footboard and it has been turned uh, by Mr. Mister into a gorgeous bench. So we still need to build the bench seat for it, but we've got the frame all together and we've painted it in Georgina, which is this gorgeous dark teal color from the mango paint line. And uh, as you can see, it's got a beautiful smooth finish on it. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna distress it. So once you finish painting your piece, whether you're distressing or not, I highly recommend giving a light sand overall to your piece before you apply any kind of finish to it. The reason for that is this feels really, really nice, but with a quick, a quick sanding like that, it actually feels like smooth as butter. I can't even tell you. This is like the softest feeling thing ever right here. So don't be alarmed. I know this kind of looks scary, right? The color went from this gorgeous teal to this sort of washed out color. When we put our finish back on, this color is gonna come right back to its original beauty. So I'm gonna give a light sand over all. Um, again, I'm just using a 220 sanding block for this. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can distress, but 220 sanding block is sort of my favorite um, starting point. And where I want distressing to happen is um, around all of my edges. I have these beautiful poster bed, um, I have these beautiful poster bed posts here. So what I'm gonna do, they have some really great detail and pretty detail up here on the finial. So I'm gonna give them more sanding in those areas so that a little bit more of the original finish comes through. So you can see right away on my edge here, I got this beautiful um, detail of the original finish coming through right away. block fairly flat and get even pressure everywhere and then when I get to my edges I give a slight angle so just a very slight um, tilt of the wrist and that helps bring out um, this here this original finish so if I'm going flat it's like this and if I stay flat if I stay flat I don't get that edge up here but once I put a slight angle you can see that original finish come through right away it looks so beautiful so unless you're going for a really, really clean look and you're gonna add details maybe with your hardware or otherwise, um, the best way to sort of bring out the dimension and all those beautiful details of your piece is through distressing. So I'm gonna distress this area here just the same as I distressed the whole flat. I'm just going to um, overall with my standing block. And then as you can see, doing that doesn't get into this recess here, which generally your distressing wouldn't happen in the recess anyways, but I'm just gonna turn my sanding block on a slight angle to make sure that I get right in there. I'm just gonna do a once, once up and down in all of these areas. So once I've got overall, I'm gonna then do a little bit more distressing because I think a little bit more of that original finish should come through in this area. So I'm just gonna keep going. And you can see right there, very quickly we got some beautiful, beautiful finish coming through. Now this little video, <laughs> you're just gonna wanna, don't be afraid to play with your sanding block, move it around. Change the angle that you're holding it. Make sure that you get every area so the whole thing feels super soft and smooth. And I'm gonna make sure there's some distressing right on these edges right here. Oh gosh, it's so pretty. Can you see that? Oh, I love it. This bench is so gorgeous. I'm going to be covered in green. <laughs> this part of the process can be a little dusty, so um, you might want to do this part in your garage or outside if you have the space to do it. Otherwise, just do it where you are. Just put a cloth down to catch any of the dust. So you can see 
see the color overall has changed now that we've done our sanding back and our distressing everywhere. But again, don't be alarmed. Once we put our finish on, this is gonna come right back to that original rich color. And the beeswax finish is gonna look so gorgeous on here. Um, it's actually gonna make it even richer looking than it did before we distressed. So the whole thing now has been sanded. It feels, I can't even tell you how incredibly soft this feels. It feels so lovely, um, which I think is important because when you paint your furniture, I think not only should it look good, but it should feel nice too. Um, and this, this mango paint stands out so beautifully, and this is what we really love about it. So once you've got all your distressing done, again, you just want to take a, a, a t-shirt rag, a dry rag. You don't want a wet one. Um, and you're just going to wipe off all the dust. And you want to make sure that you do remove all of this dust before you put your finish on, so that you're not getting this colored pigment into all of your I usually take a rag and do a once over and that kind of gets all the big amounts of dust off and then I'll either um, grab another rag or sometimes I even just shop back this rag to get nice and clean and then I go over and do a second round. But it shouldn't take long, just a couple, couple minutes tops to get up all your dust. And when you do that too, you can already see your distressing starts to come out a little bit more. Maybe come up over here as I wipe down this one here. So as we pull the the dust off with the rag, it really helps. You can really start to see where all that beautiful distressing is, is happening. And when we put our finish on, it's going to showcase that even more. If you distress too much, again, you can just do a nice wipe off your dust and do another light coat of paint in that one area. I wouldn't do a spot touch. Like if I distress too much right here, I wouldn't just repaint that area. I would just repaint this whole flat panel for example, because you don't want to see your starts and stops of where you've got um, new paint applied. If I distress too much on this vanilla up here, I would probably just paint this section right here until the first, sort of the first natural break in the furniture to another section. So another way that you can distress your furniture with the mango paint, which is unique to this paint, is you can actually do a wet distress. Um, I didn't do that on this piece, but maybe we'll save that for another video. So we're ready to move on to our next stage, which will be applying our finish. 